Hello, beautiful. If you're new to the channel, my name is Zakia. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I am so excited about today's video. A few weeks back, I took you guys on a store tour of Crate and Barrel, and while we were there, we came across this beautiful linen floor lamp, and I was so inspired by that lamp that I wanted to create something that was definitely based on that design. Not a knockoff. <laughs> Don't come for me, Crate and Barrel. But I did want to create a piece that was inspired inspired by that piece and that is what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today and I am so excited once you guys have gone through this tutorial and really gotten a good grasp of the basic concepts of how to make your own lamp you can create any custom lamp that you want to the world is gonna really be your oyster so enough of the chit chat let's get right into it let's get started this is the Remy Natural Linen Floor Lamp by Crate and & Barrel, and it retails for $369. While I am sure that it is worth every cent, it is a little pricey. So I decided to challenge myself and see if I could achieve the same look for less. I went to Home Depot to pick up PVC pipe and I chose the pipe that was three inches in diameter on the inside diameter of the pipe and it was 10 feet long. I also picked up a wooden disc for the base of the lamp and another lamp kit. I already had a lamp kit on hand that I ordered from Amazon, but I just wanted to be sure that I would have everything I might need. The one thing that was actually a challenge to find was a piece of wood or metal to sit on top of the lamp. And that's because I didn't want to have to cut a round and deal with the possibility that it might not be perfect. So the other really important component of this project is the fabric. So I knew I wanted to find a neutral colored linen. It wasn't necessarily important to me that the linen color be exactly the same as the original lamp, because remember, again, this project is only inspired by that lamp. And I also wanted to make it a custom piece for my own environment. I first went to Joanne Fabric, but I couldn't really find anything there I liked. So then I headed over to Hobby Lobby and I was helped there by the most amazing associate, Victor. So Victor, if you are watching this video, hey! <laughs> Victor was all the things, kind, courteous, and polite. And Victor helped me choose the fabric that I wanted, which was actually an upholstery fabric, which I think is an excellent idea because upholstery fabrics typically come in wider widths than standard fabrics. And they're also a little bit stronger and typically a little bit more suited to projects like this. I also picked up some iron-on interfacing because I thought that a little bit of body from that interfacing would help the fabric to stand up. So this was our pipe, which actually is long enough for two lamps. So I'm gonna take that into account when it comes to pricing out this project. This will make two 54 inch lamps. I am using my miter saw to cut the pipe, but you can use a hacksaw to cut PVC pipe. It would just take you obviously a longer time. Just be sure to be really careful and should try to get the cleanest cut that you can. Because remember, you need a really flat base so that your lamp can stand evenly on the floor. So if you do happen to get a little bit of unevenness, just use a really fine sandpaper and sand it down until you get it even and smooth. I thought that it might be beneficial to add a little bit of weight to the bottom of our lamp and also to add a little bit of surface area to attach the standing part of the lamp to the base part of the lamp. So I have placed plastic wrap over the bottom opening and I have taped it up with this painter's tape just to hold in any uh, moisture or water from the concrete mixture. And I definitely should have used more than one layer of plastic wrap here. So if you replicate this and if you use the concrete, then definitely use a few layers of plastic wrap there. 
So what you wanna do is to stand your pipe up where it is very even on something flat. I just sat mine on a paper plate, but you may wanna put it in a bin or something with a flat bottom where it can stand straight up. And then I added about a cup and a half to two cups of quickrete mix. And then I just poured in some water and that will just set itself after a couple of hours you will be able to work with it it will be a little damp though so you do want to make sure that it is completely dry before you try to attach it to the base and again here you need a really flat surface so if you need to sand it down a little bit to get it completely flat after it's dry just go ahead and do that but be sure to do it outside we're gonna be using hot glue to attach our fabric to the PVC pipe. So you definitely wanna be able to get a really strong bond. So in order to attach our fabric to our interfacing, you turn your interfacing the shiny side up and match it to the wrong side of your fabric. The instructions for how to bond your interfacing with your fabric are usually found right on the bolt of interfacing. It will tell you exactly what temperature you need to use and how much force you need in order to bond the two materials. So the interfacing that I bought said to press down hard on the two fabrics for eight to 10 seconds in each spot and use the wool setting and use steam. I did all of these things and for some reason, I just could not get the fabric to bond with the interfacing. I tried and tried. Luckily, since I was using an upholstery fabric, this fabric had enough body to maintain its shape when it was wrapped around the pipe. I had this fabric cut as closely as possible to the length it would take to perfectly wrap around the pipe. That way the seam would just go straight down the middle of the pipe and I could lay a piece of wood trim over that to hide the seam and also to replicate the metal band on the crate and barrel lamp. I used the blue writing on the pipe as a guideline in order to lay the fabric in a straight line. I'm using Gorilla Glue hot glue and a Gorilla Glue hot gun. And I'm starting in the center because I just thought about an upholstery, you wanna start in the center and then work your way out down the sides. And before you get started with this, make sure that you have everything you need within an arm's reach. Like have your hot glue gun set up right next to you have extra hot glue stick set right there next to you because you're gonna have to work really, really fast with this. Ideally, you want to do one line of glue all the way from the center to the end of your pipe for each side of your pipe. That way you don't have to constantly try to lift the fabric and add more glue. If you need to, that's definitely okay. But one of the perks of using a really hot glue gun is that the glue stays workable for longer. So you have a little bit more working time also, and this is very important, you wanna pull the fabric firmly, but you do not wanna tug it so that it distorts the shape of the fabric and then you have one side that is longer than the other or anything like that. I tried to work as fast as possible, yet slow enough that I wouldn't make a mistake. I didn't wanna to use too much glue so that it would overflow or squeeze out of the fabric but I also wanted to work as fast as I needed to work to get the fabric down before the glue set. I think that if I tried this project again, I would probably just sew a tube of fabric for the pipe and attach it on the inside of the pipe with hot glue or something like that, I think would probably be a lot easier of a process. Don't get me wrong, this is still definitely very doable, especially if you don't have a sewing machine. And if you were making a tabletop version of this lamp, which would be a lot shorter, it would also be a lot easier to get it done. The other main issue that I ran into with the fabric was that even though we tried to get as close as possible 
to the exact cut measurements on one side of our pipe the fabric was a little bit longer so it did overlap i just glued it in the same spot that i glued it on the other side and then tried to trim off the excess sometimes when i am making these custom pieces there comes a point in the project where i'm asking myself like hmm is this really going to work like i thought it was going to be easy it seemed simple when i planned it out what is happening right now and that was this point in this project i just felt like i wasn't sure if it was going to turn out really precise really clean looking but I soldiered on to see this through to the end. And the next step was to add our wooden trim. The original lamp has a metal band that goes down the side. And I was only able to find this square shaped wooden trim from Hobby Lobby. And I had to use two of these in order to get the right height. And I actually did have a little bit of hot glue squeeze out along the side of some of the wood and I just worked really quickly to wipe that off. The perfectionist in me had a really hard time with this part of the project because it didn't turn out as cleanly as I wanted it to, but it still turned out really, really well. So at the opening of the pipe, I am putting hot glue inside of our tube and i'm gonna fold the fabric into that and i'm gonna press it into the hot glue if you notice i cut out a little bit of the fabric in notches just to get rid of some of that fabric and to help it curve into the pipe a little bit easier and as i'm pushing the fabric in and flattening it down into the glue i'm just trying to make sure that that fabric on top of the pipe stays as flat as possible you will repeat this process at the bottom of the pipe except that you will glue the fabric to the cement that we poured into the bottom of the pipe this particular time that i tried constructing this lamp i actually didn't use cement and it still worked out just fine at this point we are ready to attach the base of our lamp to the body of our lamp and we're using this birch round that i picked up at home depot you can definitely stain the wood pieces of this project they would be beautiful in any number of colors and you could even paint them i'm choosing to keep mine raw because i just like the natural wood color although it probably would be a good idea to add some sort of finish just for protection whatever you choose just make sure that it is fully dry before you try to attach any of the components I decided to use an ivory paint since my linen is a light ivory color. Now this is where the real magic begins. This is a lamp kit that I purchased from Amazon actually a few months ago and I just haven't had a chance to use it until now. There are so many different lamp kits on Amazon and so many different colors and finishes but I really like a nice brass finish so I went with this kit and I will link it down below. From what I can tell, this kit has the same problem as a lot of other lamp kits on Amazon. They have the pieces and they're decent quality, but the instructions are really, really lacking. And as you can see here, it's written in tiny, tiny print and the diagram is written in even tinier print. So even though the lamp kit from Amazon had all the pieces I needed, I had to use the instructions on the back of the Home Depot box. This next step is something that I should have done before I attached the body of the lamp to the lamp base, and that is to drill a hole in the pipe for our cord, but I went ahead and did that now. I used a 3 8 inch drill bit so that the cord would fit through perfectly. The first thing we're going to do is take the cord from our lamp kit and feed it up through the hole in our lamp body. You're going to want to feed in quite a bit of the cord because we're going to have to pull that up through the pipe. I turned the lamp upside down in order to pull the cord through the top opening. Once the small wooden disc was dry, I drilled a hole in it using the same 3 8 inch drill bit. 
You definitely want to measure for the center of this disc because this is really going to affect the look of your lamp quite a bit if it is off center. Our light kit came with this threaded lamp pipe kit and that's what we're going to be using next. I will show you each piece as we use it so that you know exactly how to feed our cord through and to wire this lamp. I'm using each of these pieces to meet the needs that I specifically have for putting this lamp together. This first piece that we're screwing on is a coupler and it is made for joining two pieces of threaded pipe, but I am using it here to hold our components in place and as a decorative element. We're going to follow this piece with a knurled lock nut, which is this round disc right here with the little notched edges. And we're going to follow that with a standard washer. And then at the end, we are going to follow that with our round disc. Next, we're going to place on the other washer and a lock nut. We're gonna screw all of these about six and three quarters inches away from the top of our threaded rod. At the top of the threaded rod, about half an inch down, we're gonna screw on the other coupler. And then from there, we're gonna top that with the harp. Holding all the pieces securely in your hands, top that with the socket cap. The socket cap has a small screw in its side that enables you to loosen it or tighten it. Once you have placed the socket cap over the harp bottom, you will want to tighten this screw. We're gonna take all of the pieces that we just put together and we are gonna thread the lamp cord through them. At this point, you want to be sure that everything is lined up and that all of your heights are where you want them to be. You can even test it by putting your shade on your lamp and seeing what height you need everything to be and just making sure that everything is okay before you hot glue down that top round circle. Now you can take your shade off and get your hot glue gun and you're ready to glue down your wooden top. Be very careful here so that you can maintain a really neat, clean appearance. I was so nervous about that moment. I didn't wanna have to try to reposition that top. I just really wanted it to look nice and clean. You definitely want to be sure that you do not let the lamp cord slide back down the rod after this point because you will not be able to get it out without prying the disc off of the top of the lamp body. Right now we are making something called the underwriter's knot and that knot is designed to keep this cord from sliding back down into the rod. I'm doing it pretty slow here so you can see exactly what I'm doing, but if you still need help, you can definitely look that underwriter's knot up on the internet and get a clear diagram of how it's done. I'm going to do it one more time just so we can get it right. Since this does involve electrical wiring, I want you guys to check, double check and triple check everything that you're doing when it comes to the wiring. One side of the wires is gonna have a little bit of extra ribbing on it, and you're gonna wanna feel that and look at the wire for a visual inspection. And once you have isolated which wire it is, you're going to use that wire, which is the neutral conductor, and you're gonna screw it on to the silver colored screw on the socket interior piece. You may need to loosen the screw up a bit to make room for the wire. I like to fold the wire over the screw and then tighten it with a screwdriver. Tighten until the wire is very secure. Fold the tip of the other wire over the brass screw and tighten this side as well. Push the wire down into the rod assembly as far as you can. Then we're going to top this with the socket shell. Press the socket shell down into the socket cap and wiggle it back and forth until you hear and feel it snap. 
At this point, our lamp assembly is pretty much done. However, the rod that we have is silver and I would like it to be gold to match the rest of the fixtures. I should have spray painted this earlier. So if you are going to do this, I would definitely recommend spray painting the rods before you use them. But since I had already put everything together, I needed to paint the rod in place. So I just went with rub and buff, which actually wasn't the greatest solution. I probably just should have used a metallic paint. But nothing was going to get me down at this point because I was right there at that point of victory and our lamp was finished and I was so so happy and she is so beautiful so gorgeous I love this piece more than I can say and more than anything I am just really excited that there are so many possibilities of other things that I can build and create and that just really excites me okay so it's one thing to look good on the outside but we also need to make sure that our lamp works. Let there be light. If you are passionate about interior design or you might happen to be clueless and you want a little bit of help, please consider subscribing and sharing my channel with anyone else who might be interested. Thank you so much for being here. Let me know what you think about this project down in the comment section. And as always, until next time.